Okay, thank you for coming. Week eight, we talk about the final project. I'll tell you what the criteria, the standards are for the project. I'll follow with you through the notes posted in a specific page where you find highlighted the process and the template to follow for the project. And then starting today, but extending into next week, we'll take one example, a short story on the automobile, we'll read it together and we'll discuss what we would do if that short story were one of those that I, as a student, picked for the project. All the while, of course, feel free to ask questions and later on, even past next week, I'll be asking you what progress you're making on the project, what questions you are. I'll review some key points. Keep in mind that past this week, there won't be any real substantial written assignments so that you can focus on the project itself. There might be one more assignment related to the project just to make sure that you don't wait until the last moment because it's not the kind of project you can do during the last two hours of the day and also to make sure that you're aligned with the criteria for the project. I would like also at the end of the class to take some time to watch together with you at least one of the two silent films left in the page that I created, two films from 1913, less than 10 minutes each. I'll start with a series of announcements. On Sunday, I went with my son, as we do almost every year, to Electrify Expo at Nassau Coliseum in the parking lots surrounding the venue. I tried to do it as an educational experience to see what are the trends in the industry but I also try to observe the reactions of the people. There were plenty of people on Sunday afternoon there. A lot of sun, beautiful day. And I try to see what picks the interest of the people there. Where the people are stopping. Where are people spending more time. What kind of demos they go for. right? And I try to get some conclusion. So... As usual, I put together a page that I invite you to visit. It's just a series of pictures because the pictures tell the story. And in order to guide you to the reading of the pictures, I included a summary of the key points for this year. The ideas I gathered from spending two, uh, two hours and a half at Electrify Expo. Clearly, hybrid cars, cars with an internal combustion engine and an electric engine, which at this point are very efficient in terms of gas consumption mileage, and they're not as expensive as electric cars, don't get space, don't get much attention. Same for small or medium-sized vehicle placed in a more affordable price range, although the affordable price range for electric cars in the US, in North America, today is between 35 and 40,000. So it is still above the average price of cars in general. You, as usual, I found an overrepresentation of electric vehicles that are big, even bigger than the average car, heavy. I uh, did a demo with the electric Hummer, beautiful. The car weighs 10,000 pounds. 
moves very nimbly, of course, incredibly agile, price tag starting from 98,000. They got all my data, I'm not going to buy one, right? But a lot of big heavy vehicles, Cybertrucks, for example, that would be another great example. All of the vehicles tend to be very quick, very fast. During the demos, they were taking people uh, outside of the parking lot and through a loop around the stadium, encouraging at some point the, the demo guy that you had in a car would encourage you to step on the accelerator and, and you would see this because we were uh, riding, surrounded by other electric cars, everyone going as fast as possible, but big price tags, right? So again, that cannot be the direction for most of the consumers, unless you think of a different model where individual ownership is replaced by sharing a vehicle or just using a vehicle, self-driving vehicle, calling it with an app. There was an abundance of alternative solutions for urban mobility. I noticed today we have a monowheel. How do you call, Shayun, how do you call, no. how do you call your, your thing, your wheel? Well, it's a unicycle. Uh, yeah, unicycles were there and plenty of other solutions, uh, sco electric scooters, electric bicycles, small electric motorcycles, medium-sized electric motorcycles. They're all more affordable as usual, as it, happened, as, it, as, it, as it has happened for the last two years, a lot of attention, people will spend a lot of time talking there to the people. For the big cars, they would, people would go for demos, people would walk around the cars, but you wouldn't see people talking with the Tesla staff, talking with the staff at Lucid, at GMC or, or Ford a lot. For the alternative solutions, you would see people engaging in conversations with each other, with the guys, because clearly those are more within range. I can see myself buying one of those because the uh, initial investment would be less than $1,000 for, for a scooter or just a few thousand dollars for an electric motorcycle, a small one with limited range, uh, 50 miles or so. And Creative solution, one of a kind, prototypes, concepts, they didn't offer much hope for regular people because they focused on two things. Tuning, so you get an expensive Tesla and then you get, to, you get it tuned to go even faster uh, or not, not just in terms of speed or acceleration, but faster around the track, or rest the modes. You take an older car, for example, there was a Bronco from the late 1960s, converted to electric. So they installed an electrical engine and everything else, uh, the, the cooling system for, for the batteries, etc. Or there was even a DeLorean, the car from Back to the Future, converted to electric. But again, those conversions tend to be expensive okay so those are my considerations and you can look at the pictures to have an idea you must have heard how uh, there was an event uh, by tesla where they introduced different things they were not represented of course at electrify expo it was too uh, early but tesla presented the robo taxi which is self-driving in fact doesn't even have a steering wheel, something else they don't, didn't put, is a charge, a, a, a port to charge it. It's supposed to charge by induction, by moving across uh, a charger like some wireless uh, charging telephones, right? And they announced this robo van that uh, uh, right away people on the internet commented looks straight from a film, especially if you think of 
uh, iRobot with Will Smith from years ago. To top it all, they even had an Android. And although we later learned that those Androids that were serving cocktails or beers to the people were remotely controlled, were not completely autonomous, they were scary and impressive. They did have an Android, a robot, at the Tesla Pavilion, at the Tesla Space and Electrify Expo. Before I left, I made sure it was still there. I didn't want it to jump on my car and I was, while I was driving, like Will Smith, have to fight with, with the robot itself. The Most of the editorials on the events remarked that this was mostly vaporware, marketing, a PR operation. The vehicles or the robots are nowhere near production or real use in the real world, okay? So it's like going to the World Fair in New York City in 1964 to see the cars of the future. And, and most of those cars uh, that were uh, in, in the transportation and mobility pavilion there never were never put into production. I want you to know that at the end of November, Netflix uh, will be releasing a TV series based on Ayrton Senna, a Brazilian Formula One driver, um, probably the l last big champion of the sport who died uh, in a racing accident during a terrible weekend, Imola 19, 1994, during the um, practice and qualification sessions, first a young Austrian driver died, but they didn't stop the event. And then uh, on Sunday during the race, Ayrton Senna, three-time world champion of Formula One, died in a terrible accident. He was driving at speeds approaching 200 miles. We know from the investigation that he pressed the brake because he lost control of his car for two seconds. But when he hit a wall at the Imola racetrack in Italy, the car was still uh, driving at about 140 miles. And he didn't die right away. He was helicoptered to a hospital but by the time they got to him, he was most probably brain dead. And following this accident, uh, more efforts were made into making Formula One uh, safer for the uh, drivers. And, and in fact, uh, not as many people has died since then. So, and it, it should be an interesting series. Uh, he was certainly one of the best drivers of all time. He raced in Formula One for about 10 years, 160 races approximately, and he won one out of four races. Uh, during that period, he was especially good on a wet surface, uh, driving in the rain. Don't forget that tomorrow you have the next, and as I said, the last real written reflection of the class. It's focusing on the novel, The Lightning Conductor, and, and, the, and the excerpts that you find on the class wiki is called Molly Randolph, which is the female protagonist, No Woman. So try to find the best, most interesting examples in the novel where you can see that owning and learning how to operate the car becomes an empowering experience for the protagonist, allowing her to live the new ideology, the new feminist ideology that during that time, before the term feminism became popular, went under the label, the moniker of the new woman movement. Of course, in order to better demonstrate this, it might be useful to include not only one or two good examples to analyze, but perhaps a counterexample. Because as we said when we discussed the novel, for the novel, for the female writer to demonstrate this transformation, you have to see that she's not entirely new 
during the first half of the novel, right? So there are times when she behaves like a Victorian woman, right? In a more submissive role, waiting for the man, her man, Jack or James, James Brown, the, the, the pseudonym of her driver, who's in fact a British aristocrat, Jack Winston, to save her, defend her, protect her. She's never entirely that kind of traditional woman. From the very beginning, she has element of new practices and behaviors associated with her. But as I said, the book has to show that there is a transformation. Otherwise, if she's already an entirely new woman, there is no arc, there is no development of the character, okay? So feel free to include passages. Of course, if you include passages, make the assignment a little longer. That's why you have between three and 600 words, right? The idea would be to have 300 words of analysis, of discussion, right? Not 300 words where 150 of those 300 are quotes with only quick comments. And as usual, if you need clarifications, if you need assistance, if you need an extension, let me know by tomorrow, but don't wait until eight o'clock tomorrow night when usually on a Friday I'm not checking my email. There is a specific page devoted to the final project where you find all sorts of suggestions, not limited to the points that I'll put on the screen today. I'll just focus on the main points, but refer to this page before you do the project and while you're doing the project. Perhaps if you have time, even when you review the project, it might be wise to see if you've aligned your project with the methodology explained in here. So what are we focusing our attention on for this project? This is a list of the main topics of the class. What are we trying to do? What are we trying to learn in this class? We're trying to focus on the emotional reactions to the new technology of the automobile. Does it produce fear, concern, or is it mostly excitement, enthusiasm? Is it the object of the desire by a potential consumer, right? And is there a period, a phase of anticipation before the car enters the life of a character? What are the consequences of the use, operating and owning the car? And besides the emotional reactions or together with them, because they're all part of the same system, we have the physical reaction starting with the nervous reaction. How is the nervous system of the humans using the technology reacting and adapting to the experience of the automobile, driving or riding of the automobile? A big part of that is the experience of speed. So speed produces feelings, emotions, reactions, physical reaction, nervous reactions, and especially for the sensations of speed, it doesn't matter whether you're driving or you're just a passenger, you can still experience that fully. Then there is the first form of marketing for the automobile. The idea of tech evangelism enters society with the automobile, where you have users, consumers, who turn into marketing apostles who are talking about the car in such a way that they convince others to purchase a car. Something that we see a lot of today with influencers, with experts of various kinds on YouTube and, and Instagram, talking about digital products, digital devices, right? Going into um, details but they're not paid directly. They're not hired by the companies to market those products. 
they do it because they have, at a personal level, a great enthusiasm. Uh, they're obsessed with these devices to the point where you see specific people specializing in a small family of products, just Android tablets, just e-ink tablets, uh, just certain kind of phones, etc. And of course, since this is the last point, since we're working on texts, we don't want to talk generalities. We don't want to talk in a very intellectual way. We have to show how the language communicates the ideas that are mentioned in the first three points. So it's nice to be able to identify these topics and themes in the texts you'll be working, but where is the evidence? How is the topic articulated with the language? Because the language is never just repetitious, redundant. The language will change from one passage to the next, even just slightly. And, and therefore, there will be nuances to be noted through the analysis of specific passages, keywords, phrases, etc. The project involves some research, a work on sources. The expectation is that you complete your project with three stories. And for this semester, the expectation is that at least one of those stories is original, found by you. But when I say finding, please, please hear me. You don't go to Google and put automobile. That's not how we do it because it wouldn't be an academic approach because essentially you're doing academic research to an extent for this project and academic research is not done starting with google.com unless it's a sub section of your project where you need to find things on Google. So have I identified and listed on this page a series of resources where you can look for stories on the automobile to include on your project so that you can show me that you understand the topics to the point where you can recognize a valid, relevant, pertinent, short story. So it starts here with Harper's Bazaar, which was a magazine from the early 1900s, but there are more than 10 publications, journals, magazines listed here with links, and that's where you do your research. You don't have to look at all of them. Initially, you can just explore, click on a link, read, see what kind of language, what kind of stories, because these are not necessarily, it's not like Harper's Bazaar is about automobile. Harper's Bazaar was just a magazine with short stories, articles, all kinds of material. See, if you're comfortable working with one or more of these, it's up to you. And my suggestion is simply open any of these links, which usually offer the collection of six months of issues or a year of issues of a magazine, and just flip through the pages virtually, right? Just look at the titles. Just see the materials. And when you think you found something interesting, then start reading. Read the first paragraph. See if it is promising or move away. Okay? <coughs> within, <coughs> within each of these magazines, you can, of course, use the internal search box, right? You can put some keywords, and the page for the project includes suggestions for good keywords. And then see the results and see if something interesting comes out. We're trying to work on a well-defined corpus because, as I said, if you go to google.com and start there, it's like trying to find a needle in the ocean, right? Because Google is not interested in your pursuits. Google wants you to click and possibly be exposed to ads. So trying from Google 
will not take you to anything relevant. Also, because we want to, to proceed in a true intellectual, with a true intellectual approach, we want to restrict the temporal context to the first years of the 1900s so that we have an homogeneous body of work. And it's also aligned with the chronology of the class, right? Because a story about the automobile from the 1960s would have been influenced by films, by uh, the commercials, the marketing, the active marketing. So it's not as interesting. I've included, of course, a short description of the project. This would be the one that you find here. So the goal of the project is to document, describe, and explain. And notice that the three verbs have a different uh, uh, activity in mind. To document means to classify, to catalog. To describe means to describe the contents, to summarize a short story, for example. And explain means to analyze. Patterns of representation. That's what we're looking for. We're not interested in each specific story. None of these stories are Juliet or Romeo and Juliet. They're, they're, they're never a literary masterpieces. We're looking for patterns of representation, behaviors by the characters, social practices, marketing strategies. Even, as I said, these people are not marketers. They're just so into automobiles that they want other people to share their emotion reaction to it. Emotional and physical reaction to the automotive technologies through the analysis of three short literary stories with a substantial focus on the automobile. Of course, we need a story that supports our research to be found in journals and magazines listed on this page. And there are suggestions. I'll just limit for now the suggestion to the idea that you don't have to find three stories that have a lot of in common about the representation of the automobile. Let's say three stories that represent a negative representation of the automobile, where the automobile is something that doesn't work, doesn't bring joy, doesn't bring everlasting excitement. The stories may represent different angles on the technology. Okay, They don't have to be three stories about women and automobiles. It's, it's up to you. And it would be nice to have three stories that are similar to an extent, but we have to be cognizant of the time we have, the time you have, for this project. You don't want to make this project unmanageable by setting goals that are too high. And I've included a template. So it's not a paper on three short stories. It's a catalog where each story is treated through different sections that are all illustrated following this. And we'll look at it before. You, you have what it means to include references at point number two, what it means including in synopsis, relevant quotes, and analysis. But these, this is the template. So each story will have the following section in your project. Each story will have some references, a, a synopsis, some quotes, and some analysis. Okay? But as separate sections. Okay? This time, it doesn't have to be one narrative flowing from the first to the last paragraph. It is different sections with different characteristics. And we can look at them together. Now, you may have noticed that the first section references was number two, because under number one, the first step in the process is the following. You need to find a story, right? And so you have some suggestions. In here, what kind of story are we looking for? First of all, has to be a story with a focus on the automobile. 
right? Um, so that, that would be the last point. I found it. Make sure that reference you to, to the car in the story are not incidental to the plot, right? If you have a story of two people falling in love, going out for a date, that would be a typical story from 1905 or 1910. People in a city getting to know each other, meeting randomly with some kind of meet-cute device, and then something develops. And at some point, when they have to meet, one of the characters takes a taxi cab to go to a place where they meet. That's not enough to include the story in the project, right? Because the story is about the two people falling in love. The automobile doesn't have a strategic, an essential, a crucial role in the story, right? However, if these two characters in this urban setting are meeting because he's driving the car, she's looking for a ride, and he stops and gives her a ride, and then later on, while they're driving, they're on the car, they're talking, and then they have an accident with another car. And then this brings them closer together. You can see that the car has a very essential role in the story. Because in this kind of story, the two characters would not have fallen in love if the automobile were not part of their story, of their first encounter. <clears throat> Same with a story where a woman who's driving a car is stranded by the side of the road because the car is not working, and she's working on the car. The uh, man comes by with another car, stops to give her help. She refuses his help because she's perfectly capable of fixing the car. And this prompts more interest on the part of the male character, a woman who shares my passion for the automobiles and is good with them to the point where she can not, not only drive but work on the engine. And the story develops from there. The relationship is built upon the common interest in the car. That's a perfect story. So make sure that the car occupies a central position and make sure there is also a section that I've not reproduced in here about the language. Make sure that you understand the ambiguities of the language, right? For example, you may find a story where the word car appears 50 times. But in fact, it's not a story about automobiles. It's a story about train cars or street cars. And they're just using car to call that kind of vehicle, right? Has to be an automobile, okay? Now, I suggest it should be a short story because short stories are typical of these kinds of magazines. However, stay away from chapters. These magazines would often publish chapters or installments of longer novels. And you see right away the difference, right? If the title promises you a story for the automobile, but right after that you see Roman numeral 18, that's chapter 18 of a novel on the car. And those excerpts are usually much longer than a short story. They can go on for 10 pages. Okay, so stay away from just a fragment of a novel. Look for an actual short story. And as, as I said, I provided three examples on the page and one of them, the best, most significant example, we will read and analyze, discuss in class today and next week. But when I say short story, some of these magazines can have a story that is only 10 lines, 15 lines. Usually those stories are no good. It's not about the length of the story though, because yeah, 10 lines, you can just move on. Three pages, perfect. 
But what about the stories that are in between? Right? Just one page, half a page. Is that good enough? And the measure is not the number of words, but whether this text is built like a story. That is to say, is there a narrative development? Not just the description of one scene. Shorter stories that are too short, maybe just one scene with a joke at the end, some kind of punchline. Are the characters going through some kind of transformation? Is there an arc to the story? That gives you a better sense of whether the story is suitable than not just how many pages is the story long. Okay? Keep that in mind. So, number two, the references. Talking about references, section number two should include the bibliographical reference for the story. Right? And you know what it is, right? The title, the name of the author, if it is there, of course, some of these stories are published anonymously. The pages, the date of the issue of the magazine where they're found, the title of the magazine, and include a link to the story. Make sure it's a link to the page with the story. So once you take the link, click on it, does it take to the story or does it take to the first page in the Google document? You don't want that. Once you've listed all the details about the story, if the name of the author is listed, do we know who the author is? And you can do a simple search. And this time you can even try google.com. See if you find a short biography. See if it is a well-known author from the time and provide some information, basic information, right? Just a short summary of who this guy was. What is the style and genre of the story? Is it a comic, dramatic story? Is it a love story? Right? And, and this is just one or two sentences, meaning... One sentence to describe the style and perhaps another sentence to justify your classification. It's a love story because it is the story of two people that fall in love after they have an accident. They're both driving and they hit each other on the car and this accident allows them to know each other, meet each other, spend time together later on to deal with the consequences of the accident. Many of these stories were published multiple times, right? These authors were trying to sell the story to as many publications as possible, or if a story was good, then other publications would try to buy the story and publish it. So, again, using Google Books or Avitrust, you can easily find if the story appeared on other magazines, and E is just optional. It's very rare, but sometimes the story may have been discussed in a book or an article about the automobile. It's rare because it's rare to find uh, precise references to a random story since there were so many during that time. Number three, section the next section after references in your project is the synopsis. It shouldn't be just a summary of the story. It should be an informed summary of the story. A summary of the story that shows your understanding of the role of the automobile. So it should be a summary from which I understand why you've included the story. So it shouldn't be overwhelmed the reader shouldn't be overwhelmed with little details about the story. However, include as many details as necessary to make the reader understand why this story can be relevant to the understanding of the representation of the automobile. One suggestion, if you find this more useful, it's, it's optional, but 
it may be useful to take the main character, or sometimes you may have a female and a male lead in the story, and describe the summary of the story from their point of view, which may show the transformations they go through once they purchase the automobile or drive the automobile. This may help you if you focus on the point of view of the character instead of looking at the story from a mile above and everything seems equally important. If you go the way of telling the summary from the point of view of the male lead or both the male and female lead, then it may be easier to filter what is extraneous to the theme of the automobile. Okay? And again, short synopsis, it depends on the short story, right? It may be just a few lines, it may be two or three paragraphs, okay? As long as the synopsis is useful to understand the story, not just a regurgitation of everything in the story. Next section, pick some quotes. Again, don't quote the entire story. Pick the five, ten short phrases or passages that are more indicative of key elements in the story, key elements in the language about the automobile, right? It should be quotes where even with our commentary, I read the passage and right away I say, wow, this, this is an interesting description of the feeling of speed. Or this is an interesting reaction to becoming the owner of an automobile, right? So be very selective and the quotes should be self-evident. The analysis in the next section, but the quotes should be self-evident whereby if anyone reads the story after reading the synopsis, any, anyone reads the quotes, the quotes are telling, are significant. Finally, the final section of your template to catalog each of these short stories is a first level analysis, right? Not in the most in-depth analysis. So what are the ideas in this story? What are the themes related to the technology? And does the narrative follow one of the patterns we identified in class? For example, this is a common kind of pattern with different variations, right? Is there a stage in the story where the characters are anticipating eagerly the purchase of the car, the arrival, the delivery of the car, right? And does it follow through with, that it, does it go into a section then the story where you find the description of the, the car has finally arrived, the car is in the hands of the consumer, is the consumer fascinated by this product, seducted by it? Is there, to follow that, a moment, an episode that represents this complete rapture, this complete immersion in the technology? Or is the rapture characterized negatively in the form of loss of control? I was expecting a lot from the car, but I cannot control the car. And therefore, this loss of control scares me. And at the conclusion, what is the conclusion of the story? What is the message, the moral of the story? Is it followed at the end, the story, by the destruction of the automobile? There is an accident, the car is completely wrecked. Separation from the automobile. Believe it or not, even when magazines were already selling commercial ads for the cars, they would publish stories where people at the end decide, oh, I'm going to, and, and we'll see in the examples. At the end of the story, in the examples I'll show you today and next week, the main character, the man who purchased the car said to his wife, I'm going to sell this car for 30 cents. Meaning this is a disaster. I don't want this, this car in my life. 
Okay? Or are there any other kind of consequences at the end showing that life before and after the automobile has changed dramatically? Of course, besides this kind of pattern, which is common but not the only pattern you can find, keep in mind for your analysis this presentation with core concepts about the automotive technology where you can find some useful ideas for your analysis. Don't try to improvise or be descriptive in your analysis. Try to go for brilliant ideas. And of course, some of the ideas you find in this presentation are the idea that there is a symbiotic connection, right? The car is the extension of the human and vice versa. The human becomes the extension of the car. The car gets humanized the human gets machinized, turning to a kind of machine. Finally, another strong theme in many of these stories are the definition of the self, the character's identity, through the purchase of the car. Now I have the car, people see me differently. I see myself differently. Okay? This should be the strong ideas in the analysis. Now, three stories... Each catalog, each section devoted to one story should be including everything, references, quotes, etc. 800 words, 1,000 words, something like that. Okay, so you repeat this template for three stories on the automobile. This may be relevant uh, but not every time, especially if you find it would be useful, you can include a short comparison, compare the various stories to one another, the stories in your project. But of course, as I said, if it is relevant, if those stories are completely different, if you're comparing apples and oranges to notice the inevitable differences, don't do it. But if you have two stories where women have an important role, then you can reserve a, a short paragraph to this kind of comparison, okay? So you repeat the, the process. Now, let's start with this example because this is the perfect example. Everything I said is in there. It doesn't mean that every short story will be as perfect to work with, right? But it's nice to have an ideal model and then you can find something that, in one way or the other, approximates this kind of ideal. It was published in life. It's called Von Bloomer's New Auto. And it starts with this representation, a magical representation of the automobile, the moment of rapture, right? The moment the, the driver is bent on the car. And this is found, an actual reference. The woman is taken for this ride, and they're both completely taken, right? But it will end up not being such a positive experience. Um, I've included a link to the story, so you can read it at home. And I'll start easy. I'll just read with you some passages from the beginning of the story. The story is about three pages long, but not really because there are illustrations, other things that have nothing to do, vignettes and jokes that have nothing to do with the story. But, oh, of course, I didn't comment on the headlights turned into skulls, right? Which are not found in the story, but reflect the spirit of the story. This is a negative representation of the car. It starts with Mr. Bloomer, perfectly happy, a new transformed man because he has just purchased an automobile and ends up with him telling his wife after something that might have been a fatal accident, telling his wife, I'll sell this car for 30, for 30 cents. Okay, That's how negative it, it is. But notice how it begins, how telling the language is. At last, our happiness is complete. This is a line 
uttered by a husband who comes home after purchasing a car. The car will be delivered later, right? He has signed the contract, but is expecting delivery of the car. But he comes home to announce to his wife this big purchase. And the first thing he says is, our, mine and yours as my wife, happiness is complete. What more do you want in terms of relevancy for the representation of the automobile as a magical product, right? We weren't happy before the car. The car has come to produce this change in our life. Not to provide some efficient form of transportation. No, no, no. It's, the car has come to make us happier and as happy as we can be. And to follow this, you have the representation, the physical representation of the joy of this man who doesn't have a car yet. So this is still part of what in the pattern we call the anticipation, right? The car is still somewhere else. There was a light of supreme joy, supreme joy in von Plumer's eyes. There was gladness in his voice. There was a suppressed, but nonetheless real, attitude of unqualified satisfaction in his whole manner, right? So they go through the list. The eyes, the voice, the demeanor, right? To characterize the sensation of happiness, anticipating the experience of the car. And he continues with something else very significant. I'll skip to the end of the second paragraph. He tells her wife with emphasis, at last we can live, right? Which is something similar, and you can introduce these connections to what you saw in Molly Randolph's experience in the novel with Molly Randolph, where she sees cars in England, she doesn't have one, and she says, I felt small, right? Now my life is incomplete without it. And then the big announcement comes, right, at the very end, because you have to keep guessing what is that produces all these reactions. I have bought an automobile, right? And there is a surprise reaction by the wife who says, well, you were against the automobiles, right? She says, you told me you would never would buy one, that they were always getting out of order and were a source of endless trouble. The story is from 1905. Of course, cars are unreliable. And condescension in the reaction of the husband is not a male chauvinist reaction. It's just the evidence that he's now a new man. He's now a superior man, a modern man, because he has he, he owns an automobile. So she cannot yet understand what he is experiencing. He says, perfectly true, more than true, but not true for this car. And he mentions a fictional road run is not an actual brand, although there were cars called roadsters, road runners during that time. He says, yeah, the other cars, but my car is not like that. It is different. And how did this happen? <clears throat> we are still in the part before the automobile. This is the experience of the purchase. How did he come to the decision of getting an automobile? He was proselytized. He was converted by another owner. I was talking with a friend yesterday who has one of these inimitable machines has to be unique and it took me out for a little spin so the conversion is through the experience itself once you try it you cannot go back to your previous life i experience a sensation <clears throat> that i never had before so clearly you see the idea of a process of transformation the wife is skeptical 
like in many other stories, even in some of the stories by Charles Loomis, the wife, for example, Araminta, the wife in the first story, is quite skeptical and more reasonable. She, she says, so the cart broke, broke down. No, uh, it didn't and it couldn't with this kind of cart. And notice her language. She says, I hope that you have not believed too much. Right? They're using the language of conversion, of religion. But he is converted. He says, this is not a question of belief, but one of personal observation founded upon the laws of logic. But clearly, his experience was very emotional. And then he adds something very significant in terms of language. This is the kind of passage I would include in the selection of relevant passages. Being of a mechanical turn of mind. So he is now changed into someone whose mind <coughs> is shaped by the experience of the car, right? And uh, she will later say, well, mechanical turn of mind, you cannot fix a faucet in the house. And he will respond, well, faucets are trivial things. And a man of my standing in society should not be concerned with fixing a faucet. But the car is a superior kind of technology, so I will be fixing the car. I will be learning how to operate the car and know all the intricacies of that kind of management and experience. Again, it goes back to that idea, my natural mechanical mind. What does it mean, natural mechanical mind? Think in terms of evolution. What I suggested, how Darwin's The Origins of the Species, the species was applied to society during this time. Once you change the ecosystem, introducing the technology in the social urban ecosystem, people will either be able to adapt because they have the natural skills required to operate the machinery or will perish. And that's the idea in here, that he has discovered that he has this natural inclination, predisposition to the new technology. Right? And will now have a chance to give me the car, a source of recreation that I have long been in need of. Keep this in mind to understand this passage. People around this time, 1905, were already talking a lot about stress, work-related stress, and stress generated by social issues as well. And we're not talking about... Um, the kind of pathologies we now look at generating or associated with stress. But they were talking about neurasthenia. Neurasthenia was a kind of mental exhaustion produced by um, excessive stress experienced by, by someone. So recreation here doesn't mean I'll have fun with the car. It means I'll be altogether a better individual because going for car rides will introduce balance in my life, will compensate me for the stress that I experience in other areas of life and therefore will keep me sane. It's not amusing oneself with the car. It's much more than that. And then the... And then the wife will say, when is the car coming? And he says, well, the car, I'm supposed to pick up the car at a train station 10 miles from here, so I'll go there and come back. She'll probably hire a, a cab, a coach, a carriage to go to the station. And, she, and he says, I'll be back by three. It'll take me two hours to go there, start the car, come back. So exactly at three, you'll see me coming. And Wife believes him, she's working, cleaning the house, two comes, 2.30, 2.45, 3 o'clock, he's not there, 3.30, 4, 5, he's not there, and she worries. Finally, he comes, there is a big car that she sees coming along the street, 
towards their house. These are rich people, of course, living in a rich neighborhood in different houses. And he's been pulled. His car, which, was, which is much smaller, is being pulled by the big car. And he explains that the batteries failed three miles from the house and he had to be pulled uh, with, with ropes by another car. And, and, the, and the wife says, I told you, these cars break down. They're not reliable. And he says, no, 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 this has nothing to do with the car. And the wife says, what do you mean it's nothing to do with the car? If it made the car fail, must have something to do with it. And he says, no, 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 because the batteries are external to the apparatus of the car. And whoever put the batteries, put the wires in the wrong way, left the wires exposed, so there was a short circuit, and the batteries died. But um, it's a simple fix. We'll have it adjusted, and we'll be able to go out for a ride. And we'll take it from here next week, because I want to show you one of those films now. But essentially, the rest of the story... It's a series of problems, of issues with the car, one after the other. And then after the last one, who could be fatal for Mr. Bloomer and his wife, he decides to return the car, sell the car, and continue on living without such a technology. So very interesting in terms of language, the development of the story, the narrative arc, and we'll... Uh, analyze more and discuss the projects um, in detail at the beginning of last, last week's classes. <clears throat> so let's watch a famous film from 1913 called Barney Oldfield's Race for a Life, directed by Max Sennett, who's also the actor who plays the part of the protagonist the main protagonist. Barney Oldfield was a famous celebrated car driver who appeared often on stage in theatrical shows having cars on stage, that was a popular thing, and in films, especially during a time when for several years he was banned from racing for uh, unethical unsportsmanlike behavior. He was very aggressive as a driver. The story is very simple in this film. There is a woman, Mabel, played by an actress very famous of the period whose first name was Mabel. And she's pursued by two men. One is the big bashful suitor. They, they define him that way. <clears throat> who offers her flowers, is very gentle, and, and clearly she is falling for him. The other is the villain, called the villain, with mustaches, more aggressive, surrounded by a gang of thugs. So the woman gets kidnapped by the evil guy. And as it was typical, in shows even without, without, before film was introduced at the end of the 19th century, became a typical situation. The woman is tied to the railroad tracks and there is a train coming. And of course, she needs to be rescued. She's chained to the railroad tracks and her better suitor, goes to Barney Oldfield, who has a car, explain the situation, and they both race against time, race against the train to get to the woman before she is run over by the train. Of course, at the end of the film, as it should be for moral, uh, morally appropriate content, the villain continues to do criminal things, and meets its demise, right? Dies at the end of the story. So let's look at this film. It should be a little less than 10 minutes long. 